All right. Good evening again. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to today's Saturday morning training call. Remember, we do this call every Saturday on this same, it'll be the same link. Make sure you're getting your people plugged in, guys, so they can get all of the information. Here's what I want you guys to remember. This is not about you. It is not about you. It's about us. The bigger this company gets, the bigger we will all grow. I can promise you that. And I'm going to share some things with you today. I hope you're taking notes, but we're really going to discuss no excuses this morning. And then I will run through the three basic elements of this compensation plan, because this call is specifically for our new members, our new members. Now, we've just set up some private groups for our silver members and above. I will be hosting every other week a special private training for our silver members and above. It's advanced training stuff, guys. You wouldn't even, you would get lost if you even uh, were on a silver training call because you don't have the organization yet to even try to get to diamond. So what we want to do here is get everyone basically to silver. That's where all the matches start in this company. And that's where really the fun begins in this opportunity. But what I'm going to do this morning is something I haven't done. I've, I've held it really close to my, my heart. I've, I've held it close to myself. I've been very, very secretive about this. Very few people know my story. I've never told my story. I don't go out on Facebook or social media posting my story. One, I don't believe it's people's business. And two, I'm not a, a, a Debbie Downer. I don't believe in, in and I'm going to, and I, I train as I go here, guys. You got to be careful on social media. People are watching you. When you're out there posting negative stuff, when you're out there posting political stuff, and you know, do what you do. I tell people all the time, you're going to do what you do. It's totally up to you, but I can give you some warnings. You know, people don't want to hear the negative. Okay. You, you have to stay positive. And if when I tell you my story today, hopefully you will understand not only what I've been through, but I want you to, if you, if you guys follow me on social media, you're going to be blown away, I think, because you're going to say, I never knew this because I never put it out there because I stay 100% positive when I'm around people. I stay positive no matter what I'm going through. But see, it was just literally about three years ago, I became very, very ill. I, I, I was rushed to the hospital. They found out I had what's called double pneumonia. I had double blood clots, and I was rushed immediately into surgery. Upon coming out of that surgery, I could no longer walk because both of my legs had totally locked up. The muscles had locked up. Now, they say I can walk again, but I've got to go to rehab, but that's neither here nor there. But again, I was forced into a wheelchair. Man, you have to remember just before that incident happened, I was a part of a, 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 a company called Skinny Body Care. The owner of that company's name was Ben Galinsky. And that's, you all know him. He's the owner of Live Good. Uh, ben got burnt out with the industry. He walked away. Uh, he came to me. He was going to move me and my team over to the new company where he was actually merging the company. When his people say he sold it, he merged it over there. He wanted to get out. He was burned out. He And if you ever get on the calls on Thursdays, Ben always tells his story. So I won't go through that of why he got walked away from the industry. And um, after I got sick, I was forced to be home. There was no more skinny body care. Those checks were gone. But I was fortunate and blessed. One, I made $4.8 million in that company. Uh, two, I met some amazing, amazing people. Matter of fact, I have someone special on this call this morning. I'm going to let say hello. We created over 11 millionaires on our team in that company. And we created hundreds of people earning over six figures. I mean, we were we were killing it. Because we had that power line marketing system. We had a weight loss product. It was hot. It was fast. It was the best eight years of my life. It allowed me to literally to purchase a home for cash. Uh, I was riding around and I was being stupid. Okay. I was being dumb with my money. I was buying Porsches every year. I was living the good life. I had the home. I had the pool. I, had, I was taking vacations all over the world, but I wasn't managing my money. And to make a long story short, one day I woke up and everything was gone instantly. I'm not even going to cover that story, but I'm going to start from there, guys. I woke up literally in a wheelchair of 16 flights of stairs. Matter of fact, I was so high up, I would crawl down those stairs and I actually broke both of my arms. I have two steel rods in my arm to this day. 
Okay. Now, when I woke up that day, I found that I was basically I had nothing. So I played a little game with the system. What I would do is call 911. The ambulance would come get me, and I told them I wanted to commit suicide. I didn't want to commit suicide. I just knew that by law, they had to take me to the hospital and monitor me. And at least I had somewhere to go and they'd feed me three times a day. Well, that kind of ran out and they, they, they sent me somewhere. And I stayed there for a couple of weeks trying to get it together. And then they released me and they released me to a homeless shelter. Homeless. I went from owning a 350,000, right now that house is probably worth about $600,000, but here nor there, I walked away from my lifestyle, my family, my life was all taken away from me at the, at the snap of a, a, a it, it was just, it, it was over. And I never forget, they took me to a homeless facility. I was scared to death. I've never been in that situation. Um, they told me um, if I was lucky, I could get a room. Uh, they had this facility where I could get a cot and you had to check in every day at two o'clock and to make sure if you get in line and hopefully you could get a bed that night or you had to sleep in what's called tent city, which is basically outside in a tent or a blanket or whatever you could do. Here it is freezing cold, raining. I'm scared to death. I'm a grown man. I just had a family. I had everything. And here I am in a homeless shelter. And um, I'll never forget, they gave me a bus ticket, a, two -way, a one way bus ticket to go anywhere I wanted in Dallas. And I used that ticket literally because I refused because of my pride. My ego was broken. And I said, there's no way I'm standing in a homeless shelter. Let me get out of here. And I'll never forget, I took the bus to the Dallas Fort Worth airport. Now, here it is. I'm at the airport. I stayed in the airport that night. And what I did was I went over to the international section where flights were going out in the morning internationally. And I met a guy from Korea, a businessman. From what I understand, he's a multimillionaire, but he, he didn't have any American money with him. And he was hungry and he wanted something out of the vending machine. And I'll never forget, I had about $5 in my pocket. And he wanted to trade me some Korean money for for anything I had so he could get him a little something to eat out the vending machine because all the restaurants were closed. It was the middle of the night. And I used my light here. This is how stupid I am. I gave him my last $5 to get him a little bite to eat when I had absolutely nothing but that ticket. Well, the next morning, the airport literally kicked me out because they knew what I was doing. And I had to go back to that homeless shelter. Long story short, I, I was homeless. I, I used to check myself in every day at two o'clock. I would get a cot, thankfully. And every morning they would wake us up at five o'clock and then you had to go, they had this little center, okay? And you could go to the center. Oh, let me tell you this. When I went back to the homeless shelter in the bus station where they took me back over, this lady stole my iPhone. Literally grabbed my iPhone and stole it because what they do when you're on the streets like that, if they get their hands on your iPhones, they'll go and block them and sell them. And that's how they make money. And I didn't know that because I've never been in that environment, but I had my iPhone stolen, so I had no cell phone. And I'm here in the homeless shelter, but every morning I would get up and I would go over to the little training center where you could luckily get you something to eat, okay? And they had these computers. And I would log into that computer and all my passwords were messed up because I was logging in from diff a different IP address. I mean, it was insane. And I used to hit dads at five or six o'clock her time in the morning, say, dad, and she'd be like, are you all right, Tim? I'm like, I'm all right, I'm, I'm gonna make it through this. Nobody's knowing this. And then I would make a post about live good. I would literally tell people to take the free tour from a homeless shelter. Now they closed that center at 12 o'clock noon every day. Again, I'd sit outside for two hours waiting at two o'clock to go check back in and get a cotton. Here, here's what I learned while I was there is that one, I didn't want to be there. Two, that people get caught up in their environment. I cannot stress to you how many people I met being homeless in a homeless shelter. How many people are totally conditioned to being in that situation? I mean, some of those people were earning three, four, five, six. One guy I met was making $6,000 a month on his VA disability benefits, 6,000 a month, and you're in a homeless shelter. I also noticed that everybody there had a cell phone. And I'm like, how in the world are y'all getting all these people getting, these people are broke. They're in homeless shelters and they all have cell phones. 
And what I found out and I learned real quick is when you get government benefits, which I, I wasn't getting because I had no ID. I didn't have a driver's license. I didn't have a birth certificate. So what they do is they try to get all that for you through their services, but it takes time. And I found out when you get benefits, government benefits, you get you can get a free phone from the government. So I'm checking it out, but I didn't even have any of that stuff. And they told me that it would take a couple of weeks to get all of my uh, my my benefits in my Social Security card, my my, my ID card for Texas. And I said, I'm not going to be here a week. I, this is no, I'm not getting caught up into this. And finally figured out that if somebody would would take me in and vouch for me that and I could go live with them, they would give me a bus ticket anywhere in the United States. And, uh, you know, thank God to this day. And I'm getting choked up telling you the story. My sister in Virginia vouched for me. And they gave me a Greyhound bus ticket from Dallas, Texas, to where I am now. Some of y'all know I'm not even going to tell you where I am. I'm in an undisclosed location is what I call it. So anyways, that was a mess because I'm in a wheelchair. And a lot of those buses cannot trans transport you in a wheelchair. So I literally sat in a Greyhound bus station. It took me almost a week to get from Dallas to where I am now. I get to I get to where I am and I'm living with my sister with nothing but the clothes on my back. No money. My sister, fortunately, went out and got my driver's license where I am. I mean, my ID card. She got me my birth certificate. I was able to apply for for social services, food stamps. I was able to use that to go online and get a free phone. So I got an Android phone for free with free minutes and all that good stuff. But here I am coming out of that situation, living my worst life. You know, I'm rock bottom. But you know what? When I got that cell phone, I was the happiest human being on the planet because that's all I needed was a cell phone with some Internet. That's all I need. Just watch this. And my sister's telling me every day, Tim, just get healthy. Don't worry about the money because she thinks a little different than me. And most people do. They don't understand how entrepreneurs think. And I'm like, no, just let me do what I do. And I got that cell phone and I went to work. And man, I'm posting, take a free tour, take a free tour, take a free tour. Whole time I'm talking to Ben back and forth and it was no money and live good. And I'm talking to Ben and we're discussing back and forth of which direction he wanted to take the company. And he says, Tim, I'm going to launch this thing and uh, we're going to turn on this power line marketing system. And he said, we're going to turn, we're going to go international. And I'm going to put in this two by 12 matrix with matching generational bonus. I said, uh-uh, here we go. Folks, I want you to hear me and hear me. I want everybody to hear me right now. You listen to a recording, listen to what I'm going to tell you. We're not talking two years ago. I was in a homeless shelter on October the 28th of last year, five months ago. I had absolutely nothing, not years ago, five months ago. I'm living at my sister's house, and Ben turns on the system on December the 13th. We went to work, take the free tour, take the free tour, take the free tour. People started joining. Many people didn't. It was a crazy experience because we were getting beat up all over the Internet. The company's never going to last. The company's illegal. The company's a Ponzi scheme. They can't pay out on memberships. They're using white label products. Ben Glintz is not going to sit. He's going to sell the company. He's not going to be around for the long term. And basically, Tim Miller, you suck. OK. But we kept going. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. Some came aboard. Some didn't. But guess what? This company changed my life. You see, when we launched this thing on December the 13th, the next thing I know, I'm starting to get these weekly checks. They started out averaging about $1,000 a week. Now, I go from homeless to $1,000 a week the first couple of weeks because, mind you, there's no matrix money. There's no matrix money. You don't get paid on the matrix to the second month anyways. There's no generational matches. None of that stuff, guys. None of it. All we had was I understood that I get 25. Now, remember, I have nothing. But I can get $25 on every person I enroll 
and I get nine levels of pay on fast starts. Focus on the focus, Tim. Focus on the focus. I'm not in the best situation. My sister goes to sleep at nine o'clock at night, and cuts off the lights, and I can't have the TV. I'm going crazy. This doesn't matter how I live my life, but I have to live by her rules. I'm in her house. I'm a grown man. I'll be 55 this year. But you know what? I would get on that cell phone when that TV got cut off and them lights went out. And I'd be on that cell phone the rest of the night, take the free tour, post it on Facebook. Some of you have been following me a long time. You saw my posts, see my posts. And you know what? Those checks started coming. First week, $1,000. Next week, $1,000. Got our first residual check. It was about 900 bucks. But guess what? I made just enough to move out my sister's house. That was the best feeling in the world. And I literally moved into an extended stay hotel. But I was no long, longer under her roof. I was on my own. I can eat DoorDash. I can do whatever I have to do. All I need is this Android phone and internet connection. Leave me alone. Get out my way. Take the free tour. Posting, 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 posting. For the last four months, folks, I have been living in an extended stay hotel. Right now, as I talk to each and every one of you, I am in an extended stay hotel. Now, the goal is to be out of here in the first of June. But let me tell you what's happened in four months. I've gone from literally homeless to my sister's house to living in an extended hotel. And Ben said it's on the call yesterday. I'm approaching. $100,000 a month. That's $1.2 million per year. And we're only five months old. I wasn't given no deal. I wasn't given positions. I wasn't given a title. I don't get any extra income. You see, as a matter of fact, I actually fell under. So I'm under somebody else in that matrix. But I understood if I focused on the focus. And I went to work and I didn't make excuses. I didn't say I can't get to or everybody I talk to can't do this. See, I didn't get caught up in that nonsense. I didn't get caught up in in, 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 in these chat groups and everybody's complaining. Not everybody, but people complaining. Well, I can't get nobody. And I go to their Facebook wall and they post in 10 different opportunities. You know, I got focused on the focus. Every time somebody would inbox me with something crazy. I, and I've seen some some crazy stuff. And I'm like, why in the world would I risk my name and my brand? I'm sitting up here in an extended stay hotel to be fooling around with this nonsense. I don't need no lead program. I don't need no system. All I need to do is get people to take this free tour. That's it. And in five months, folks, five months from homeless. To be sitting where I am in a position to earn over $1 million in income this year. Who does that? What other company on the internet can do that, honestly? Let's keep it real. You know, I was talking to a guy that's been in the industry a long time and knows the numbers. And I asked him, I said, how many people in this industry make $100,000 a month or more? He said, less than 1% of 1%. I went to business from home and I looked it up. Less than 1% of 1%. And I'm going to tell you, 50% of the people on that list are fake. They're not even real numbers. But it's not about me. That's my story. But we have already created 22 diamonds in this company. The diamonds in this company are earning in excess of over $10,000 a month. Christopher Hopkins, who's disappeared, who's been sick on his deathbed, he's in the hospital right now, has been gone for the last month and a half. No posting, nothing. The guy posts recipes every day. One of my first distributors. This guy is making an upwards of $20,000 a month from his hospital bed. And we have people out here making excuses. You can't get two. You can't go bronze. See, let me share this with you. The problem is some of us are in positions where we're too comfortable. 
Listen to me. Some of you all, listen, my voice are too comfortable. You know what I mean by comfortable? You have a home and you got a mortgage or you're paying rent. And as long as you have a job that can cover your necessities, you are what I call comfortable. See, you're stuck in what those people in that homeless shelter were stuck in. They were comfortable. If you want to win in this industry or win in business, you have to get uncomfortable. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to change your way of thinking. Okay? Now, let me let me share this with you. One thing I don't do is I don't talk politics. Okay? I don't get into that. Republican, Democrat, Independent, well, I don't care. Do you. Go vote. That's what you do. But let me make you all aware of something. What would you do? Ask yourself right now, what would you do if you were all of a sudden overnight put in a position like I was where you become uncomfortable? How long could you last? How long could you last if you lost your house tomorrow? How long could you last? Now, listen to this closely, especially in America. How long could you last if your disability check got cut off or you had to go two months without your disability check? How long could you last if your job was over tomorrow? How long could you last if 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 the interest rates doubled tomorrow? How long could you last if you worked for the government and you had to go without a check for two months? How long could you last if you're in the military and you don't get paid for a couple of months? I'm talking those guaranteed checks. What if your disability was cut off? What if your Social Security was cut off? Well, folks, let me let me let me hip you to something real quick. You may not go homeless. You may never be put in that situation. The one thing I love about this industry is it is recession proof. And the economy is the economy you create. Because here's what you guys may not know. I don't know if you guys are news freaks like I am and watch the news. I don't know if you know America is in a crisis right now. And if we don't get a bill passed to pay this debt and raise that debt limit, do you all know within the next couple of weeks, if if they don't pay, they've never done it before, but we're getting close. If they don't pass a bill to raise the debt limit, do you realize everything I just said to you is going to happen? Do you realize all social services will be cut off? All government offices will be cut off? And guess what? All those checks that you're guaranteed, your disability, your social security, unemployment checks, will be over now you may get it back and get it up when they do finally get it through but could you last without it right now but all of you have your hands on something today called live good live good is something special it's something different it's something fresh to this industry see once you get it what we're doing here what ben said on the call the other day he said i I just want to get this in your head i want to get this in your head what i'm trying to get into you See, listen to this, people. We are not a weight loss company. We are not a weight loss company. Do we have a weight loss product? Yep. Our coffee is a weight loss product. We're not an energy drink company. Okay? We're not a super red or super green company. We're not a CBD oil company to my Canadian friends. We are not a CBD oil company. See, a lot of people get caught up in that and they say, oh, I wish we could get this product or get that. No, you you, you don't get it. We are not a product company. We are a membership company that allows our members to buy products at wholesale prices just like Costco. That's what we are. That's what all of you have to understand. We can add any product at any time we want to. We just added another product, the pain, the the pain stuff with CBD in it. Now, I don't know if you can get that in Canada. If you can, you can. If you can, you can. That doesn't stop. That doesn't stop the show. Okay, that's not our fault. Certain governments don't allow CBD oil. If we can't ship it there, we can't ship it. That doesn't have nothing to do with nothing because we have over 15 other products to choose from. 
And you are not even forced on an auto ship in this company. You know, I had someone laughing the other night from Canada. Tell me, when are we going to get CBD oil to Canada? I was, I don't know, whenever y'all elect somebody and you get an administration up there that passes a law that says we can do it. Until then, don't c- call your congressman or whatever y'all, senator, whatever. But I said, I tell you what, if you work this business, I said, if you work this business, you'll be able to buy all the CBD oil you want to. Matter of fact, if you work this business, you'll be able to buy your own CBD oil farm in Canada. How about that? See, you got to focus on the focus. And as we inject this company with more and more products, it's just going to build more revenue and more volume for the entire company, which is going to pay you more. Now, Desiree and I were on a call the other night with, with, with a team that, I, I mean, I tell you, exploding out of Africa. And the guy said something on that that, that, that blew me away and I never thought. He said, listen, people. He said, Jeff Bezos owns Amazon. Jeff Bezos owns Amazon. That's why Jeff Bezos is a multi, multi billionaire because he owns Amazon. Amazon started with books. The difference here is LiveGood is doing basically the same thing as Amazon, but we own part of LiveGood. See, when you become a diamond or above, you receive a percentage of everything moving in this company. Company did, what, seven and a half million, 7.3 million last month. We'll approach eight to 10 million this month. We're doubling every month. Can you imagine when this company's doing 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, where all of you are sitting right now? But we have to focus on the big picture. We have to focus on getting ranked up. We have to get all that clothing. So any of you guys out there that, that get in your head, I can't get to. Or these people here won't do nothing. And you've got all these excuses. You need personal development. So you got to get your thinking what I call stinking thinking right first. So you can't build this when your your mindset's not right. So you got to believe it first. You got to want it first. You have to have the hunger pains first. And you got to get uncomfortable. You got to get uncomfortable. It's going to take work. It's going to take not doing things you've been doing with your kids every day. I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to take letting your spouse know I'm about to give this business the next 90 days of my life. I'm going to run so we don't have to live like this anymore. You know? Guys, you guys are sitting on an opportunity of a lifetime. This is our one shot. Now, this is my second shot. If I invested my money properly in the past other than buying dumb stuff and trying to impress everybody and posting pictures of my house and my Porsches, I wouldn't have been in the position I got in. But you know what? God is good. And I'm not getting religious here, but I'm going to tell you something. Faith. I'm just going to say faith. When you have faith, when you believe, I believe I was put in that position for a reason because it humbled me. And it made me realize of what I never want to go back to. It made me stronger to now know what to do with money. Dare I tell you, we went through hell yesterday because I was fighting paying $99 a month for a Zoom. But I said, we got it. She was like, we got to get it, Tim. We got to get it. And I'm like, $90 a month. Now, here I am making, I make good money. I don't want to spend no $90 a month. But we take that, take a hit for the team. You know, we were using somebody else's Zoom, but the way we're structured, and I need to be doing more, but we have access to more and more. We got leaders out there, but I said, yeah, it's time. I think I better get my own Zoom account for for the team. But guys, let me show you. If you don't think it can happen for you, let me introduce somebody to y'all real quick. But I was in a company with Ben before, and I told you we produced 11 millionaires. There was one young lady that got involved with that company who had never, I'll let her, I'm going to let her tell it. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close out by sharing the three parts of this compensation plan. You definitely want to know, then we're going to go to work. But there was a young lady by the name of Courtney Looper. This young lady, literally, I'll let her tell it, but she was one of our million dollar earners. Guess what? She was working on another company. I, t- I spoke to her about this business a year ago. 
wasn't interested. She was fired up about the business she was in. Did I beat her up? No. Did I say what you're doing is stupid? No. Did I say your pay plan sucks? No. Your, is your pay plan better? Than, no. I just said, if you ever are open to something else, but I'm running with Ben again. But guess who I have on the call this morning? I want you to meet her to just say a few words. But let me reach out to my friend who just got started with Live Good. I promise you, you're going to see her name all over the leaderboard. I already know what's about to happen. She's been down this road with us before. But Courtney Looper, are you on the line? 